everybody, welcome back Attack, I'm Skyline Short, and today we're going to be doing a first impression review on a new tactical RPG called Fantasy War Tactics. It's for your mobile devices, it's free to play, and absolutely, it's inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics. So let's find out if it's going to live up to that name. So yeah, coming into this game, I was actually really surprised by the quality and how well it ran on my older phone. It actually ran pretty much flawlessly. Everything loaded extremely fast, the graphics were really crisp, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it wasn't just 2D. Now I'm actually fine with 2D graphics and I was kind of hoping for it, but seeing the, I guess, really cartoony 3D over the 2D art in this game, it just really, really works. Overall, polish is phenomenal, absolutely. If you're looking for a really solid game experience, this is it. Now let's talk about some of the mechanics. So a lot of you probably are very uh, interested in this kind of gameplay because, well, Final Fantasy Tactics is huge. And of course, there's also Wakfu and there's a couple of other titles in this genre. And this game does it really well. I think the mobile controls are just really perfectly fitted for this genre. Now this game in particular, with its characters, with its story, everything I think is really good. Now let me further explain that with the mechanics. So it is a strategy or tactical RPG. So the battles aren't turn-based, well I mean technically they are turn-based, but they're not like final old RPGs, Final Fantasy, they aren't like that. You actually have a board game style game. You have higher terrain, which gives bonuses, and then you have certain terrains like waters or spikes or valleys or cracks or something like that that give uh, debuffs. There's also areas that you are impassable, like walls and boundaries. And some of these characters can actually go through some of these boundaries, like the ogre character can actually go through water. You also do more damage attacking from behind. Some characters do more damage to others, depending on a rock, paper, scissors, like literal rock, paper, scissors system. Some characters are paper, some characters are rock, some characters are scissors. But with all these mechanics, I actually found the game to be quite well filled with tactic. So strategically, yes, you do have to level up your characters, acquire different characters, there's lots of different characters. And that's what I really enjoyed about this game. Even in the loading screens, you get to see all these different characters that eventually you will be interacting with story-wise and lore-wise, but also mechanically because they all have different abilities and I'm kind of excited to see them. So Fantasy War Tactics, yes, it is very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, but I think the story-wise, you know, because this is an RPG, we do have to talk about the story, it's a little bit less sincere than Final Fantasy, but I still think that there's a little bit of magic in there. Now, the story is very comic-based, okay? It's very humor-based, and it's a little bit serendipitous. You know, everything is kind of coincidental, but at the same time, it kind of goes with the whole humor thing, you know? Everything is just very random, very silly, very nonchalant about how serious some things are. It's just, it's just very weird. You're, you're a character, and you're trying to conquer the world, and you're just meeting these people, and just by chance, they kind of just fall in line with that. You're like, all right, fine, why not? Let's conquer, let's conquer the world, okay? And really, honestly, even, even though there was some slight translation errors, I found myself laughing out loud at a lot of these jokes. I thought it was actually very funny, very silly, and overall, for an RPG, it wasn't so bad. Now, one thing that I didn't like was that it takes so long to get into the PvP section of the game, which I thought would be phenomenal. I thought it was going to be exemplary, but I only have access to the first PvP section, which is just your team versus an AI team. Even though it is another player's team, it is not technically PvP, but there is a leaderboard and ranking system for that. Now, the second version of the PvP, or the second game mode, I'm not sure exactly what that does. And then there's a third locked game mode as well. So maybe potentially we will have that competitive PvP, one-on-one -on -one PvP that we really want. What I could see in this game, because it is free to play and is a mobile game, there's always add-ons that could potentially come into the game or updates. I would like to see co-op dungeons or missions, and also maybe 2v2 or even 3v3 battles, or maybe even 4v4, because you can have up to four characters fighting another four characters. So it'd be really cool if one player controlled each character. That'd be nice. But anyways, for the most part, just leaving out the PvP section, because in this beta we didn't have full access to it, so I can't really talk about it. Let's go back to the story. Now the story is really good. Overall, the polish was great. I really liked the cutscenes too. The cutscenes were amazing, and they even have optional cutscenes. And now the way the menus work in this game, I think were really just thought out. It's very genius, actually. So you have a bunch of optional cutscenes where you can go and you click a story button, and you go and watch these little cutscenes and stories, and you also have these dungeons, and you need to complete the story. Like the game is an RPG, so you need to go and do this very linear story, uh, but what's really interesting is that it has a very mobile-esque system to it, where yes, these are story missions and dungeons, but you can also replay them and get really good rewards, and they're also extremely challenging, which I really liked about this game. There is actually a level of challenge that I'm not used to seeing. And I think that's really smart. A lot of mobile games, instead of making very easy games and then they give you uh, options to pay money in order to just skip the easy grind, I think that it's really awesome that they make games challenging, hard, difficult, and then that way it sort of influences people like if they really don't want to go through this really difficult challenge but they really want that loot, I don't know, they could pay money for that. I, I like that alternative. I know it's not the best alternative, but it's there. Now, very random based. It's kind of like how chess work in Team Fortress 2 or something like that. It's kind of similar, except in RPG it's a little bit more 
more weighted, but there is that option. It's not directly pay to win, but what I like is that there's also cosmetics for all these different characters and units. You can also change their different skins, and that is definitely an awesome change. So you have all these different systems in place to keep you in the game. You have all these different ways that you can enhance your gameplay. You know, you can have different characters. You can equip those different characters with different inventory items. You can enhance those different items in different ways, and you have a Lord character. Now, the Lord character doesn't exactly have a place on the map, but he does have a presence. So he has one ability. You choose this one ability, and he supports from, well, off the board. Once you get his mana bar filled, you can use a giant burst attack, or maybe it's a heal or something like that. But other than that, most of the time you're just taking turns with your different characters, your units on the field, using their abilities and their different positionings. Now, I really like how different these characters are in their different abilities. Some move really fast, and they do lots of AoE damage, or maybe one is a supporty kind of unit. Like, basically, these different units, they aren't just different flavors. They are totally different colors, shapes, sizes, and flavors, of course. I mean, nothing too unique. You're going to have ogres. You're going to have, well, you're going to have cat people. You're going to have your usual mages, your usual extremely busty warrior princesses. So nothing terribly unique, like I guess we would see in Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is a little bit more of a unique franchise. It is its own franchise, after all. So I could say that, you know, from a mimicky kind of game, this is a game that is very much in the shadow of Final Fantasy Tactics, but at the same time, it's not done poorly. I can say that it's single player is definitely worth at least trying. And to get to the PvP, well, it takes trying the single player for a very long time to get to the PvP, but I really hope that they do have actual real-time PvP. If they put that into the game, I promise you I will actually probably be playing it daily. It's actually pretty fun. But other than that, as it stands, as a single player experience, it's very well polished and it's got a lot of content to explore. Can't knock it, and I really hope you guys try it out. Thanks for watching, I'm Skyline Shore with Attack Gaming, and this was my first impression on Fantasy War Tactics. Try it out now on your mobile device, and like and subscribe, and hopefully you come back, Attack. So thanks for watching, be sure to leave this video a like, subscribe, you can find us on Twitter. Stop. Underscore Mark McDonald and WC no Bot at a No one wants to hear that shit. No, they don't want to hear it. That's the first time they've made it all. They do. No one wants to hear it. Everyone's like, oh, that was a really cool video. And then at the end, they're like, don't forget to subscribe. And everyone's like, oh, come on. I tweet essentially to an open, empty room.